Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing, but you already know that, don't you? Because that's why you've tuned in. Now, today, we've got Big Tom from Warrington on. Tom Tom the Piper's son stole a pig and away he ran. How are you doing, Tom? <laughs> Over to you. Go to you. I'm all right, Tom. I get by. I'm, I can't come. Looking forward to the show tonight. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, mate. I'm looking what do you forward think? Hey? Does, does, does Chisora win around? No. He gets smoked or scold. I think he might get stopped in five rounds, fifth round, fourth, fifth. I can see him getting chinned. Everybody's saying he's going to come storming out, aren't they? And put it on yeah. Ilsek and try and not let him get into a rhythm. That's the How way. else is he going to beat him? That's the only way Chizol can beat Usyk, isn't it? He has to, for Chizol to be Usyk, he's not going to come out and try and outbox him, is he? Or fight on the inside. He's got to come out and, and all, try and make it a war, hasn't he? Well, Usyk is never going to allow that. He's just going to outbox him, isn't he, from the outside. And probably beat him up on the inside and stop him. Well, this is how I look at it, right? We've got a man here with nine losses. Been knocked out three times. Badly. Bashed up. And... Yeah. Uh, is it, what is he pushing 37 now? Must be, mustn't he? He's been around since 2007. Been around since 19 not blob, hasn't he? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he's controversial, in he? he? Spits in people's faces, has a roll around on the floor, flips tables up, all staged, of course. Although I don't think the spitting one more, but the rest of it, all writing scripts, aren't they? And he's got David A in his corner. Who's telling everybody that he's stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet? And he's doing things in the gym that he's never done, and he's eating kangaroo meat. So, what, well, what does that mean? Well, I've noticed this week, me with him. Um, hey, he, he, he fought oh, Chisora. Yeah, go on. I thought I'd probably put my man Chisora eight years ago, and now eight years on, he's he's trying to say Chisora is a killer. And also, before he fought Dillian White. Before just all for Dylan White in the rematch, David A said Delboy's looking amazing in camp and watches over and he's you know ready for 12 rounds of war. And now he's said, said ever since, no, he was only six rounds ready and stuff like that. I know, yeah. Well, this is how I look at it, right? It's all designed to get your pay per view money. You know, that, that's how I look at it, mate. I mean, they must all think we're lollipops. Are you paying for the pay per view tonight? You'd be buying it. I'm I, egg man. I won't pay pay for Let me just get some tissue. Two seconds. No. No, I won't be paying for uh, pay per view. I don't need to. I've got a box. I'm not. <laughs> and if and if there's if they shut it down, I'll just go a stream or I'll wait. I'm not. I'm hardcore, mate. I, I can't bring my sense to do it. If I had a million pound in bank, which I haven't, I, I still wouldn't pay pay-per-view for the simple reason that it, it's, not, it's not right, is it? It's uh, How is it even pay-per-view? I've, exactly. When you, when you look at the fights tonight on the card, right, you've got Chisora and nine losses against Usyk. If Chisora weren't this, you know, didn't have all this hype about him, he should have, you know, like, one in the mill head heavyweight, isn't it? It's a, it's a normal night's worth for you, sick, isn't it? Like a tune-up fight for him. It's not a pay-per-view fight. It's Dave Allen's not on the card. I was on the guard Dave Allen in a minute, but Dave Allen's fights off, isn't it? We love Joe. So it's not, they've got even a fight less now. What, they've got three fights on it, four fights? Dave Allen's not fighting. I know he's not fighting, so they've got, they've got one less, though, haven't they? They've got hey. three or four fights. They've got three or four fights, though, now, haven't they? Because Dave Allen's off. Right. So as a paper, it's not even paper, it's even less of a pay per view. Right, Tom, you're gonna to let me get a word in, Tom. You're gonna to let me get a word in, Tommy. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Here we go, Tom. This is how I look at it. The Dave Allen situation you wanted to ask me about, didn't you? Right. When will it? When were Dave Allen's last win? 
I'm not talking about the Dorian Darch one. Before before <laughs> that one. What is it? Lucas Brown, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And I fought David Price 16 months ago. And Lucas Brown were before that. What happened in David Price fight? He didn't win a round. Hey? He didn't he barely won a round, did he? Right, he never won a round, left with an oxygen mask on, didn't he? And said he'd yeah. be tired. Since then, they've wheeled him out, haven't they? To fight Darch. Oh, why do? Right, so he's fought Darch. That was February. Yeah. That's back up to David Price fight. Between the David Price fight and yesterday, these are the yeah. fights that Dave Allen's not back. Daniel Dubois. Martin Bacoli, Yui Fury. And then yesterday, he knocked back Mark Bennett, eight and one from up here. And he knocked back Simon Villale, 17, three and one. Right? So is Dave Allen an Instagram fighter who don't fight anybody and just wants to be out there and be famous? Or is he a fighter? Because fighting men don't knock fights back like that. And he did say to Eddie Earn yesterday, because Eddie Earn said it on IFL, so it must be true. Dave only wanted to fight a guy that was two and 60. And then he went on further down in the interview and he said it, 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 it was a guy three and 40. So whoever it were, it weren't Mark Bennett, eight and one, or Simon Vallali, were it? Eight, uh, 17 and three and one. Am I, I right? think. Yeah, you're right. But the thing with Davis, he won't. He will only fight if something's in him for him. So it's all good. People saying he fought. He had no interest in doing it the normal way. Because for me, you got to go area level, preferably English, British, Commonwealth, right? Dave, when was he nine or in a draw? Was he when he fought Dylan White? He's jumped in with Dylan White, isn't he? Because it's on a Sky Show, and he, and he started his narrative, and he like the storyline. Yeah. And he did the same Lewis Ortiz. Because although we got poor money for Ortiz, he was around IFL the entire week, weren't he? If you remember, and boxing social. He's around all the, the cameras. I think he is just in, I think he's just interested in the fame mainly. Right. Nobody can I think Dave mainly interest is just interested in the fame. And if he can pick up a belt or the belt, he's not won a belt yet, has he? Was a belt on the line, love joy. No. What? A belt with that fight? Come on, what a snake belt. I don't know WBA international. He's not yeah, but he's not even won an international, has he? He's not even won a WBC international silver, he's not won a Mickey Mouse belt. Look, he's getting punched in the head to he's gonna want paying, but if he fights Mark Bennett and Simon Vallali and gets beat, right? Where does he go from there? He doesn't go anywhere, does he? He goes to the bottom of the pile. So well, if he'd have got beat against Dubois, he'd have got well paid and he'd have been able to dine out off it. You know, like the interviews that Dave does. Dave, I know you're watching. When he goes, I fought Louis Ortiz, I fought Tony Yoker, I fought Dylan White, I fought David Price. He keeps reeling them off. I fought Lenroy Thomas twice. Well, that's five fights, isn't it? Do we agree? Yeah. Right. That's 51 <laughs> rounds. Hang on a minute. Don't don't talk over me, Tom. That's 51 rounds. How many of them rounds did he win? Two against Lenroy Thomas at Bramall Lane. It's all all right. It's all very well saying, I've been in with him. Look who I've been. I've fought everybody. Well, yeah, but... You were he were a lamp at slaughter in the money. He's being used. It's like Awara Davis, Lee Purdy, and Kel Brook being used, but he can't see it. Now, somebody is at fault for Dave Allen not getting a fight this weekend. Because I was looking forward to seeing him fight. Who's at fault? In my opinion, it's match room because we've got a new matchmaker, and he's dealing with an agent in America who's dealing with a matchmaker in Mexico, and between all of them, they've not done the checks, right? And then enter the James Bond villain, as Rapping Rob Kelly calls him. The James Bond villain, Don King, he enters it like Goldfinger or Doctor No or whatever. And in fact, the, the black fella out, live and let die. That's Don King, isn't it? He's <laughs> the fray. And, 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 he, and he's and, and he's uh, he's spoiled the spoiled the weekend, Danny, for everybody. And Eddie Earns got that much faith in Dave Allen, he couldn't even get him out against Lovejoy. All he had to do was sweeten the pot. He kept going on about sweetening the pot, apples and pears, cheeky Nando's plot up, and all that Essex 
crap that he talks. Right, but end of day, Dave Allen's left the O2 yet again after promoting LR that week after our fight week. He's walking around in a dressing gown looking like Vincent Gigante, right? Promoting the shit out of this fight for Eddie Hearn. Then he's been sent on his way. Go on, Dave, on your way. You're not fighting. As a, didn't Eddie say that he's paid Dave? Or Dave's like, he, he's tidying him over? Or did he say that? They'll give him his expenses for a camp, oh, that's all they'll give him. Weren't, weren't Dave kicking off, though, in the hotel? Because Dave said so on IFL, didn't Dave, Alan? But he would have got a very different interview last night. And he was well, sure I, he was... I don't speak to David now, right? Because he won't come near me because of this channel. But he used to live at back of me. And he's a, he's a, he's a decent ish lad to talk to. But I remember we did an interview, me and Ingram Jones. I'm driving. Baylorick TV's filming me. And every time I mentioned David back, he, he, he were he diving under the sea because he didn't want to be associated with my channel because he didn't want to ruin his chances with Matchroom. Which is fair enough, because, you know, I'm pretty fearless, aren't I? But this is how I look at it, right? Where is he heading now? Where is he heading now? Is he just a spare wheel for Eddie Earn to wheel out, say they're going to get him a fight and then send him home? Because it's not the first time this has happened, is it? No, I did it with... Um, who's the fellow he fought, Bram O'Lee? Who? Who's the lad he fought the Cal, on the Cal Brook Spence card of the Commonwealth? Lemoy Thomas. He's been a rematch in, weren't he? And he pulled out fight week. Ah, oh, the Millennium. Look, there's fighters and there's non-fighters. There's screwdrivers and there's drivers. Which one's Dave? This is how I look at it. He will regret not taking that Daniel Dubois fight because... And you got big money. Let me just ring. Let me ring you back. I'm filming at the moment. All right, mate. But uh, I forgot my train of thought there. Where, where, where were we on about them? Dave, Dave Allen. Dave Allen. I don't know where he's heading, mate. He could have fought the bar and had good money, but then he, he got greedy. But what, 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 in my opinion, is going on is this. When fighters at Matchroom... Well, Dave's not at Matchroom, is he? he ain't got to deal with them. But he's aligned he's... with them. When they get offered a fight from another promoter, like Warren, who was a rival, they want to take it. Look, he'd have been gagging to take that Debar fight, but he were told to ask for extra money. When they get offered off, offers like that, they want to take it, but A, they're worried about not getting what the offer is and not getting paid or being dicked around with the money. And B, they're worried about being left in cold by Eddie Hearn. Do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah. Look what happened to O'Hara Davis when he went and fought Josh Taylor in Scotland. After that, it were all downhill, wasn't it? Do you know what I mean? Um, eh? Lost the Jack Cattle eh? after that, didn't he? I can't hear you, mate. Yeah, he lost to Jack. Yeah, Josh, Jack Cattrall were with one and money, won't we, Eddie Earn? Point I'm trying to make is we've heard Eddie Earn send the message to all his fighters. Who've, none of them have got contracts with him, none of them. He's sending a message bro, regarding Kel Brook, and it, it's a message to fighters, and it's saying, Show me loyalty and I'll back you. And if you don't, this is what happens, like with Kel Brook. That's what's going on. But none of them. I've got the gojones to come out and say anything. Joe Gallagher did, and look what happened. He had to retreat. Within a day. Hey, his groveling within a day, weren't he? I see. I keep turning my telly on, and I keep seeing Joe Gallagher with cap like that, cap in <laughs> hand like that. Sorry, Eddie. Sorry, Sky. Sorry, Adam. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I got confused between race and equality. I'm really sorry. I'm emotional and I've got pre fighters like pressure cookers in gym. Bloody, bloody, blah. I'm Joe Gallagher from Tesco. Look, at the end of the day, mate, right? Groveling monitor lizards. That's today's words. Groveling monitor lizards. But it is what it isn't. Look, Dave, Dave's a smart kid, isn't he? He's not, look, he's acting this part out, isn't he, in Fight Week? Daft Dave. This week we've had dressing gown man. We've we've already had socks down underpants at 
Right, unlike a rhino, what else have we had? We've had gold G string. I mean, what were gambling addiction? Gambling, gambling addiction. addiction. Pissed up. Uh, Washing machine. Didn't come out of his room. come out of his room or something. Didn't he say that once? He didn't come out of my room for a week in training camp or something. We've had it all for six weeks. We've had it all. We've had it all. But what we're not having is we're not having any fights, are we? We're not seeing any <laughs> fights. All we're seeing is a load of crap smoke and a load of it's like reality. It's like a so all it is now is a soap opera, but we're not seeing no fighting. It's like John oh, Fury it, offered to fight everybody who's a world champion and, 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 and anybody else who'll fight him, but you're not throwing a punch. Well, am I right? You well, are, yeah. A load of people chat a load of crap. Will Bell, you ever disappear? No, you're going to see more of him because uh, he's not relevant if he disappears. Look, Calzaghe cleverly degaling mm. Groves. You don't see them hanging out at the back of people, do you? No. They've all got the money and they've gone. And that's it. I don't want to see them again unless they're pundits, but they're not bothered about it. Look, if you're a pundit, you've got to read off the script, haven't you? Yeah. Roger's not reading off the script, is he? He's been took off at commentary, and tonight he's not on ringside punditry. He's in a studio. So that's what happens if you say anything. They said something about Joshua in an interview, and they punished him, haven't they? That's why it looks to me. Where's uh, I might Smith? be wrong. Where's Paul Smith gone as well? He was another one on. We've got like the old commentary. He's making a living out of doing Jim Royal impressions around Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you know what? I don't not many people know this. I think I mentioned it before. I was a massive Paul Smith fan because when Paul Smith turned pro, uh how can I say it? The the hype around him was massive. Oh, he were, he were hyped out of this world, Paul Smith, when he turned pro. And I, I, were, I were on the Paul Smith Express train, like I was Froch when he turned pro. But when Paul Smith turned pro, I were on Paul Smith train, it were Froch and Paul Smith. And something happened after Stevie Bendel beat him. He, he, he won't say in fighter. I don't know. I think he got bitter. He does that to your boxing. You, you get bitter. But then again, every boxer that loses on points always says they win, don't they? So, I don't know. It's full of insecure men, isn't it? 90% of them. But it is what it is. But uh, Paul Smith, no, he's not on Sky. He's been shoved out, hasn't he? You've got to read from narrative, haven't you? But let me tell you this. Paul Smith's a good commentator. And Caldwell, he's a good comment. He's a good pundit. Good analysis guy. Him and Bell, you a bit, but side at ring tonight. Caldwell... Adam Smith will be saying, we've got Tony Bellew stood next to the ring as ringside Al analysis tonight. Compelling action. And he's been in there with Alexander Rusek and he's a friend of Derek Chisora's sparred many rounds with him. And of course, we've got Dave Caldwell, Matt, sat next to uh, Tony Bellew as the ringside analysis as well. He's trained Derek Chisora and the... Uh, Tony Bell, you went gone up against Duce, and he knows all of them very well. So we've got the right people in the right position tonight. Compelling! That'll be what will happen tonight. What do you think the narrative will be when Chisora gets beat again, though? You want, mate? What do you think they'll do when Chisora gets beat tonight? What do you think the narrative will be after that, though? Davy Dale going to overdrive trying to get Dylan White fight. You reckon? Is that Sal though? Why is somebody beating him twice? Although, wrong... oh, Povetkin fight season. then. Povetkin. Dylan or Povetkin, it'll be on pay per view. Oh, no. Why, why is Aya Felon Sky trying to turn boxing into a reality TV show by Tally? By what? They're trying to why is IFL and Sky like that clan trying to turn boxing into 
like a reality TV show, like The Only Way is Essex or something? I don't know. Probably because they want the views, don't they? They're all view hungry, aren't they? Uh, look, if I wanted views, these hour videos I do, I'd break them down into six. But that's what not what I'm that's what not what I'm about. Yeah. But this this is what gets me angry, right? Do you see comments turned off on certain videos on IFL? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, right. If it's Frank Warren getting slagged on an IFL interview, yeah? Do comments get turned off? No, they don't, mm-hmm. do they? If it's anything to do with Matchroom, Shannon Courtney, Eddie Hearn, Joe Gallagher, any of them, they get turned, they get turned off, don't they? Right, we know what happened with Mickey Theo's interviews, don't we? We Coogan, Coogan took them off, didn't he, off YouTube because somebody s- said you're gonna have to take them off and not give him airtime, otherwise you'll not get access to my son. <laughs> but <laughs> that's just how it goes, isn't it? So all we have to do, really, is just sit back and watch it unfold. It is a soap opera, isn't it? That that's what it's become, isn't it? So cringy. A lot. These people are not bothered. When Coogan gets stick, he's not bothered because he's got tunnel vision. When you're earning the amount of money that he's earning, you're not bothered what anybody says. You just have tunnel vision. And that's just how it goes. But he's an hard-working kid. You've got to give him his credit. And he's not everybody's cup of tea, but he's good at what he does. And let me tell you, it's hard lumping a camera around and having to mess around on these screens all day. I, I do a one video a day, right? Sometimes two. And... I'm not from a, a tech world, and, and and all I have to do is film it and then press a button and somebody else does rest. You know, all thumbnails and stuff like that and yeah. and that. But it's it, it's very tedious work, and I couldn't do what they do because they're doing it on move, aren't they? They're doing it with a laptop, and I'm no good with a laptop. A laptop, I need one of these, one of these mice mouse things. I'm just no good with them. I can't do it like that with my finger on a, on a laptop, but you've got to give him credit because he's worked his ticket, and he bought Coogan Cassius is an employee of Matchroom. Who's to say that Eddie Hearn doesn't even own Matchroom as a silent partner? We don't know, do we? But he's pulling the strings, Eddie Hearn, for the simple reason Coogan gets access to all shows, doesn't he? He's the only one, anyway, access. Do you know what I mean? Would you not go, though? Was, could, would, why don't you like you know, when you go to the shows? Why don't you just like stick a camera in Eddie's face and try and interview him or try and get him like how I, how will Fox and Social get him or how like the Mickey Mouse channels get him? If I wanted to interview Eddie and I won't go to Mascals where officers are where they have them shows, I'd go to his house. I'd go to his house and knock on door. No. His proper house, the one he lives in, the big Georgian mansion. One I had a, I'd go knock on door, but I'm over it now. I've tried to get him on the channel, I didn't want to come on. You move on, don't you? I'm pretty single-minded enough to move on. But the re- the reason he's not going to come on my channel like mine is because I'll be prepared, won't I? And I'll throw that much at him. He'd it- do it running. Do you remember when he went to America and that guy was throwing questions at him like while he was getting in taxi? He was destroying yeah. him. That's what had happened with me. <sighs> but what I might do... Right, we've got a van coming, right? I've got a company yeah, yeah. giving me a porky wrap. I might get this van wrapped in Porky's Corner all over the place and just park it outside shows <laughs> for a giggle. But we're going to see, aren't we? We're going to have some fun, but there's a few things in Pipeline, but this virus has been like a dagger through my heart for what we've had planned for the channel because it's been hard to get things done. But it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. So, let me just take this jewellery off. Do me, Eddie. But, uh, what, what else do you want to ask? I want to go on to Cal Brook, Mick Crawford, but well, mainly Cal Brook. What do you make? Can you hear me? Yeah, go on, yeah. What, what do you make of Cal Brook? Outburst that idea on an IFL last week, and do you think he was right to do so? Because I do, I think he was right in what he said. Look, I've been over this loads and loads of times, but it, they're hot topics at the moment, so we'll go over it. 
Kel Brook, when he first started his career, were fighting on Dennis's shows. Think he fought Ernie Smith, is it? Or some guy called Ernie. If you go on Box Track, you'll see he started out his career. He, he fought on Dennis's shows, but he, he were with Warren, won it for 20 summit fights and then other 19, 18, or whatever it is, fights he's had with Eddie Earn, right? When he was with Frank Warren, he went, and he got to WBO number one ranked. He were knocking 50-50 fights back left, right, and centre. But what do you expect when you're WBO number one ranked? Do you see where I'm coming from? Manny Pacquiao were the champion, and he weren't ready for him then. And and they didn't. And Manny Pacquiao's lot didn't think it was a big enough fight. So he were in limbo. So you've got to fight good guys that are around you. And they didn't want to do that, did the Kelbrook? So. The jump ship is his dad Terry, his stepdad Terry got involved. The jump ship, and uh, they ended up with Eddie Earn, but they haven't really beat anybody. We Eddie Earn, he's got one win, on he? Yeah. He's got one good win, and I just think it's a shame. I don't think he kicked on after he beat Porter, did he? Six years ago as well, Porter. Why didn't he fight Liam Smith? Brooke, wouldn't that make sense why he won the fight camps in the summer? Brooke Smith, that wasn't a good fight. Liam Smith Liam... and Mel Brooks are pay-per-view. In my eyes. It it's, more pay -per -view than, it's more of a pay-per-view than you six years old, isn't it? Liam Smith and Kel Brook at 154, I think, in my opinion, is a pay-per-view. I do, honestly. Both got good profiles. It's a fight I want to see. And I think that's a great fight. Why you can't make it, I don't know. Frank Warren will be licking his chops at all these fallouts because he'll want to make Beefy and Kelbrook, uh, or he'll try and talk Amir Khan into fighting Kelbrook and Kel taking shorter end at money. That's what I think we're going to see next year. So watch this space. Eddie Hearn will love it. Uh, sorry, Frank Warren will love it getting Kelbrook on a pay-per-view BT Sport fight, and Liam Smith. And none of them, Liam or Kel Brook, have got contracts We Eddie Earn. So watch this space. If it ain't Khan, it'll be Liam Smith. I can see a few fighters leaving match room, especially now you look at the Gallagher's stage. And like Callum Smith, would there be a shock if Callum Smith went to find Huh. Wow. Be a big star there, wouldn't he? He'd be treated oh, like a big star right more than the yard. No, we could go fight in the world, more of a push on the world scene. So couldn't even get fights over in America. Well, Baturbia wipes Callum Smith out. That's my opinion. Kovalev, I think he's finished now, but Anthony Yard. Yeah. And Callum Smith, would you pay pay per view for that? I would. <laughs> What's your? Anthony Yard against Callum Smith. Would I want to I see that? Of course I'd get behind that. They're not on oh, IFL man. every day, hanging out at back of Coogan, are they? Of He's Anthony Yard. Yeah, I don't get Anthony Yard. He's not fought anyone. He's not beating anyone. Really, has he? To see that, mate. Callum Smith and Anthony Yard. I think oh. that's a great fight. Liam Smith against Kel Brooks. Another great fight. You could put that on on a £25 pay-per-view. And have a bonanza, couldn't you? Could be a double header, yeah. Be made. You are. Could be a double header, that. A double header pay per view split four ways. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah. Come on. Hey. I can see a lot of these fighters going over to Bobby. Hey. I think Bobby's going to get a lot of the, quite a few of these fighters from Sky. The well, ones that are that part flick. Won't they all do something? Because. Eddie's only interested in Joshua, and then it's and that's it. He's only interested in keeping Joshua happy. That is all. That's why they took Frotch off a uh, commentary job, They're trying to trying to put people in the place. Nobody's allowed to say a word. Have you noticed how people have had a go at board, and then they've retracted it? Oh, yeah. it's mobile phone. Oh. Terry O'Connor, this is what he was looking for in fight. Scoring subjective. It's, it, it, do you see where I'm coming from? Right? This, yeah. the, the cop outs, aren't they? It's yeah. like asking a politician a question. They fight, they give you a question back. They you know, if I sat that Sadiq Khan, you know that Sadiq Khan? 
Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's giving me fines every time I go to London for congestion and, and emissions and Dartford Tunnel. Yeah. Oh, you don't have to pay through Dartford Tunnel. You just drive through. Yeah, it gets you. It takes a photo of you, doesn't it? And gives you the thing in post to fine. Now, Sadiq Khan brought all that in, didn't he? Now, let me tell you this. If I had Sadiq Khan here now, so listen here, you, you little dick, you little gimp. I say, what would you say your score is out of 10 for your performance as the mayor? He'd go, well, well he'd answer me a question, wouldn't he? I'd say, yeah. have you done a good job? Have you been successful in your position? He'd go, well, we've had this, we've been up against this, we've been up against that. I'll say, answer the question. Have you been a successful mayor? And he'd say, uh, 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 well, we had to do this and had to do that. And then I'd start choking life out of him and grip him like that. And he'd go, no, I've been a failure. Because he has, hasn't he? Has yeah. Eddie Earn failed Kel Brook? Well, he made him a few quid, but he got a face smashed in it process, didn't he? Absolutely. He made a fight Lofkin at 160. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I can't even talk about that. It's that bad. Has he failed Liam Smith? Yes. Has he failed Callum Smith? Keep talking over me, kid. Has he failed Callum Smith? Has Eddie Hearn failed Callum Smith? Has he delivered for Callum Smith? No. Did he deliver a world title for him? No, he's on ITV. There you go. On a Sourland show, right. Has he delivered for John Ryder, the Callum Smith rematch? No. No, but he did not for Ryder getting him the Callum Smith fight, didn't he? He got him the fight, yeah, but what Ryder won it. If that had been anybody else, Eddie Hearn would have been screaming for a rematch, wouldn't he? Yeah. Listen, if that had been uh, John Ryder against s- some Anthony Durrell, somebody in America, for a, or Andre Durrell for a super middleweight title on an Eddie Hearn show, Eddie Hearn would have been screaming, wouldn't he? you got two matching mm-hmm. fighters and Eddie's not screaming for a rematch. The, the moral of the story is this. He's not delivered. Has he delivered Natasha Jonas, Terry Harper rematch? No. No, he hasn't, has he? So, no. What, eh? No. He hasn't, has he? So, point I want to make is this. Eddie Earn delivers for Eddie Earn what's best for him. Yeah. That's what promoters do. They deliver what's best for them. Not for whom, for them. They deliver what's best for them. Every promoter does that. When they say, oh, it's politics and, you know, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. It's what's best for them. But they're not in the ring throwing the punches, are they? They're not the ones stop, start, stop, start, stop, start in training camps. It's all right for them driving around in big cars, isn't it? And living in big houses. They're not in the ring taking the punches like the fighters, are they? We've got to see it all even now. We've got to see a level playing field for boxing to move forward because boxing now is in a dark place, a very, very dark place. It's going back to 1999, 2000, 20 years ago. It's like it was 20 years ago when, hey, Barry Hearn bailed out, mate, years ago, let me tell you. They ran for Hills. That's probably why he calls his son Eddie Hills, you know, the super heavyweight amateur 4-0 star. Free by way of knockout. Free by way of. <laughs> Free by way of. <laughs> we ought to send uh, Eddie, Hill, Eddie, Eddie Hills a, a Benny Hart, didn't we? A porky Benny Hart. <laughs> Aye. Not winter. Well, what else? I'll go on about Scott Fitzgerald. What next to Scott Fitzgerald? Uh, he's gone mad, hasn't he? The madman himself. Yeah. I like him, you know him. I really hate Scott Fitzgerald. Hey. I really hate Scott Fitzgerald. I do. I like him. He. Uh... A fit Scott Gerrard's world ranked. I mean, is he ever going to fight again? Him, his head's gone on it apparently. Yeah, he went sporting chance, didn't he? You know? Sporting chance. Yeah, he's done it a few months ago. He's not boxing's cheeseman. Cheeseman. 
Yeah. What's going to happen to Cheeseman and Eggington? Cheeseman is 24, Eggington is 26. You think they've had too much punishment? Yeah. <laughs> massive, massive, massive. Sam Eggington's retirement bound, surely. Surely he can only go on to like 28 in now. Cheese, cheese, Cheeseman, right, is 24. Eggington, 26. Dave Allen, 28. You know what? You know what? I, I'd like to forward 20 year now. 20 years from now, we could look back and we could talk about, we could talk to these people. And where are they now? Scott Fitzgerald, mm. he might end up in Nuthouse. Dave Allen might end up walking around talking, talking like Riddick Bow. And oh, 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 the one Cheeseman, he might end up in jail. I don't know. Or saying I could have been a runner bean. I don't know. I don't know, but I worry for them because they took a lot of blows to Ed, haven't they? Although Scott Fitzgerald hasn't had as much punishment as the other three, has he? No, no one no. But Dave's had a lot of punishment. I've noticed Dave's nose. He used to have a nice nose like me. But now it <laughs> seems to be like it's over here, isn't it? He's got like yeah. massive... It's the swelling. It's like swelling that won't go down. And uh, I worry for Dave. I, I mean, maybe Dave didn't put that dressing gown on as uh, as a gimmick. Maybe he, he thought he got dressed. Maybe he forgot to get dressed. I don't know. But walking around outside yeah. an hotel in London in a dressing gown like that and a pair of slippers, it's one for all but cuckoo's nest, isn't it? Did you see him in the dinner queue? Yeah, I seen that bit. Yeah, I thought it was funny. Like he's just he playing to camera, isn't it? He's da he's acting Daft Dave, Mister Humble. He's not like that, you know. He ain't like that. He's an in very intelligent kid. He used to be a school teacher. Well, he's a very intelligent man, right? He's very very bright, very sharp, very funny. But if you put a camera in front of him, he goes into Daft Dave mode. <laughs> yeah. He does he act, Dave. You know you do it, don't you? You go into Daft Dave mode. He start going. He starts acting daft. Daft as a brush. And uh, but it, it's wearing a bit thin now, isn't it? Because there's a lot of talk going on, isn't there? But there's no fighting, is there? Anyway, move on from it now, because I, I don't even want to talk about it. Myself, cause I get asked about it a lot. It's boring arse off me, Dave. Go to BKB. Get a fight there. We'll go on. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> How's Martin Murray in the top 15 in the world? Martin Murray, right, you've got tw 22 minutes left. Right, Martin Murray has not fought for 13 months when he fights Billy Joe Saunders, but last month he slipped into the WBO rankings at number 12. How could that happen when you have not had a fight? I don't know. You tell me, mate. You tell me. Do you think, what do you think he does against Billy Joe? Hey. What do you think he does against Billy Joe? Do you think he wins around? He gets beat on points. Yeah, I think Billy Joe's stopping to the body. Eh? I think Billy Joe's stopping to the body. Well, we'll see. No, I don't think he stops him. Billy Joe's not a big puncher, is it? Billy Joe schools him over 12 rounds and then sits on the ring apron and says, oh, yeah, I could have stopped him, but I was ring rusty. I've been out a year. I had to get rounds in. That's it. <laughs> And Martin Murray sits on edge at ring and he goes, the inactivity for the last 13 months cost me. Billy's a great fighter and I'm officially retired for the third time. <laughs> so you want to slip me in rankings again and give me another bite of the cherry, Eddie? <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? But when was his last credible win? Nobody says it like uncle, your uncle Porky says it, mate. Go on, what? When was his last credible win? Martin Murray's last credible win. I don't know. He had a fiver on Rustino at 420 at Chepstow last week. <laughs> that was his last credible win. <laughs> I don't know, mate. I don't know. I couldn't. I think, stop, it was, I think, it, I think it's our Mexican fellow he fought over WBC Silver on the Robin Show. Uh, WBC Silver? What's well, that? Fighting for a losing belt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, July 2018, I think it was on June 2018. He fought he's, not had a, he's not had a decent win for two and a half years. And that wasn't that decent, was it? And it? No, it was just like a decent, it's like a ready, you know, like a steady fight, weren't it? Steady Eddie. 
I don't know, mate. This is how I look at it, right? This is how I look at it. It's jobs for boys, isn't it? If you're connected to certain companies, you'll get your chance, won't you? But I just think that... From, if Billy, Billy Joe Saunders and Martin Murray, right, I can't get behind that fight. Do you know why? Belts on line. Take that belt off the line and I'm behind the fight. Yeah. Take that belt off the line and I'm behind the fight. Lovejoy against Dave Allen. I was behind that fight until I found out that the guy were ranked number 15 on, on, on WBA rankings, but yet he were ranked 444 on box rate. Am I a lollipop? <laughs> Do I look like a lollipop? I, I, I mean, it's, has somebody pissed all the way up my leg there? Yeah, WBA rankings, Gilberto Mendoza. You fucking bent cunt. So, what do you think's happening with the board now? Then the board, with the gym board. Do you think we'll see any funny scorecards tonight? Funny, funny scorecards. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna see. You're gonna see a lot of one fifteen, one thirteen. You're gonna see a lot of one fifteen, one thirteens tonight, and everybody, because nobody has a go at a one fifteen, one thirteen card, do they? That's no. what you're going to see tonight. A lot of people playing it safe. I see 115, 114 to mix it up. Get a bit closer. How did they wow. have Vitsin winning last week? Eh? How did they have Lewis Vitsin winning that last week? I don't know, do I? Obviously, he's either corrupt or he's incompetent. It, it, it can only be one or other, can't it? He's saying he's not corrupt and they're a legitimate outfit. So he's got to be incompetent. If you're incompetent, you're not good at your job. If I say I'm a painter, right, and I'm a mechanic, I can't paint your house, can I? No. So I'd make a mess, wouldn't I? I wouldn't put dust sheets down, would I? I, I it'd be dripping all over. So, so, so I'd be incompetent, I'd get sacked. Terry O'Connor is 67 year old, right? He's obviously yeah. half blind. He's been involved in over 1,500 shows. So he's had... If Terry O'Connor's had, I don't know, two grand a show, we all expenses and all, or whatever, two grand for 1,500 shows, that's three million quid over 25 years. So he's had a good run, hasn't he? But it's time to consider it severance pay. Take the train and get out of Dodge. You can't do your job. Go now. You're annoying me. Yeah, go on, next question. Has, has Herm become... Hearn, a.k.a. Hills, 4 and 0, 3, by the way, of knockout, become bitter? No, I don't think he could, he's become bitter. But anybody who has a go at Eddie Hearn, I've noticed that he comes out and says, people, stop having a go. Be be happy. Be, be, be glad that you're on this earth and blah de blah Well, not everybody's born with a silver spoon in their mouth, are they, and had everything done for them. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn ain't got no worries. He's got everybody... Hanging out of the back of him. Yes, Eddie. Yes, Eddie. Yes, Eddie. Everybody around him is a yes man. If Eddie Hearn walked, walked outside here now and it was pissing it down and I said, what's weather like? He said, it's red hot. It's sunny. Everybody would say, yeah, it is. But they'd know it were raining. But they'd say to mm. him, yeah. Yeah, I agree, Eddie. Look, he can play that bitter card and jealousy and haters and trolls all he wants. Because he's never had to overcome adversity in his life. So why has he done a book called Relentless? He's never had a night in a police cell. He's never had his missus come to visit him in jail with kids and they've all had to strip off a strip search. He's never had any of that, has he? No. He's never had no hardship. Has he? He's never gone downstairs, gone to put his shoes on, age 14, and seen holes in him and thought, am I going to get a new pair of trainers? Because if I don't, I'm going to get bullied at school. He's never had any of that, has he? He's never, ever had any any of it. He's been a little, little Lord Fontelroy, isn't he? As Andy Patterson <laughs> says. He's never had to come ad adversity, over adversity in his life. But yet he's got a book out called Relentless. Oh, my God. Uh, who's, who's your favourite fight of the last 10 years, Porky? Frotch. Mine's Groves. Groves. He got knocked out yeah. twice. Uh, he's, a he's our favourite fighter, Groves. Yeah. Yeah. 
My where do you think Rose ranks? Where do you think Rose ranks of super middleweights? Lot since like from like no, the nineties to not to like now. Where would you rate him? Groves. Yeah. Well, look at Grove, George Groves' his career. Who's his best win? The Gale. Who's his best win? The Gales. Darrell. Darrell. Frotch took Darrell's O. Frotch took Groves' as O. Yeah. <laughs> people are saying De Gale bottled Carl Frotch. Uh, people say, sorry, Carl Frotch bottled James De Gale. There's always going to be somebody who'll get, who's mandatory, isn't there? There's always going to be somebody. But and De Gale's Don't a think... southpaw. De Gale's a southpaw, wasn't he? What did Frotch do to Boutte? No. Wrote him banjoed, him, banjoed, him several, banjoed him several times, didn't he? All right. Uh, and who, who took Boutte's O? Frotch. Right, and De Gale beat Boutte after Frotch, didn't he? Yeah. So what would have happened if Frotch had fought De Gale? Probably would have stopped him, wouldn't he? He'd have jumped on him, not, not let him get into a rhythm. He'd have jumped on him, not let him get into a rhythm and uh, dealt with him that way. Because that's what you've got to do with southpaws. If you let a southpaw get into it, this is what Carl told me. So if you let a southpaw get into a rhythm, they control the fight because everything's the opposite way, in it? And, and you're trying to get in. They're in their rhythm because they're used to fighting orthodoxers. But orthodoxers, they're not used to fighting southpaws. So they're always trying to figure it out. That's why Cal Zaggy used to win a lot of fights on points isn't he, at, at top level because people couldn't figure him out. So what you do with a southpaw, you jump on them. So watch Usek tonight come steaming out and try and get it on Usek because he didn't want Usek to get into a rhythm. That's what's going to happen tonight. But uh, Carl Frotch would have wrote De Gale, James DeGale off. He would have beat him that hard. His mama, his mama would, have, would have felt it. Trust me, he would have bashed him. But George Groves, you, you put him in top 10, wouldn't you? You are Carl Zaggy. You'd have to well, put... Carl Zaggy doing with Frotch. Uh, well, it depends what Carl Zaggy. I felt that the 2008, when the fight should have happened, I felt Frotch should have beaten him because I thought Joe were coming to end. But the 2004, 2005 against the 2000 and... Nine Frotch, I think Calzaghi would have beat him on points. Yeah. You? But when they would have fought, sorry, sorry, I got that wrong. A peak Carl Frotch against a peak Joe Calzaghi, forget whatever he is they are, Calzaghi beats him on points. But in 2008, there were chinks in the armor, weren't there? And Roy Jones yeah. and Hopkins, who were, who were old men at the time in the 40s, they, uh, they Not jumped soon. him, didn't they, uh, Carl Zaggy? But they let him off the hook. Do you think Frotch had let him off the hook at his peak? He would have been on him like Donkey Kong, wouldn't he? He'd been on him like yeah. a rash. So, but it's all about timing. And Joe Carl Zaggy and Frank Warren knew that. They knew that Joe were on slide. They knew. But a peak Carl Zaggy beats a peak Carl Frotch on points. But you don't know Carl could have chinned him. But in 2008, I think that he'd have done him. I think he'd have done him. We were there to be beat. But who knows? It, it, it didn't happen, did it? But I'd, I'd have backed my man all the way. I had my money on a knockout. Because you don't beat him by points, do you? On points. No. Because it worked great. But it'd been a good fight, and it's a shame it didn't happen. Do you think Ritson wins a world title? No, I don't, unless he's matched correctly. But on that performance of the other night, no, he don't. No. How come? I don't know. I think he's got a puncher's chance. I just think that the, 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 he's got a lot more to learn. But he's a lovely kid. His, his trainer's a lovely man. I, he's, he's, he's a good pal of mine, his trainer. And, and, and I'll, he's, he's manager, Jaffa. I like all of them. But I just think he lacks some ring generalship. And that, that's not being harsh. I think he's a great kid. And I think he, he, he could be matched correctly and win a world title. But if you put him in with Josh Taylor, I think he gets beat. He likes head movement, doesn't he, Richard? Well, I mean, how can we criticise somebody? We're not boxers, are we? And we're not, we're not trainers. But, but looking at it from outside and what the experts say, I don't think he wins a world title at, the, at looking at the, the, all the champions at the moment. But I, 
I think that matched correctly, he could do, but like I said, he's a lovely kid, very respectful, and he's got world-class power. So if you've got world-class power, you've got to be matched correctly, aren't you? Like Wilder were matched correctly, will not it? And it needed yeah. somebody with a blueprint to figure him out. Tyson Fury figured him out, didn't he? Over the 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 rounds that they'd done, didn't they? Twenty what, how many rounds did they have altogether? Twenty nineteen rounds or something? Twenty rounds? It's nineteen, weren't they? Stopped twenty seven. So fight Tyson Fury had figured him out inside an hour. Nobody else could figure him out. But when you look at Lewis Lewis Ritson's record, he's only lost once and that was a split. So we have to give him credit, but he has got massive, massive, freakish power. But in my opinion, and I hope Fano, I know you're watching Fano, don't take this the wrong way, or Jaffa. In my opinion, Lewis Ritson, if he can get down to lightweight, if he can get to lightweight, he's a freak. And it's only five pound. If he can lose five pound, it'll uh, it'll stand him in good stead if he could be a lightweight. But if he can do it or not, I don't know. But he's got massive power. Freakish. Freakish, mate. So. Um, your um, favourite person, um, Adam Smith, do you reckon he'll be on a... Do you, do you reckon he'll have improved his commentary tonight because he's been criticised the last few big pay-per-views? Do you uh, think there'll be any effort to change up? I just want to say something to Adam Smith, right? Adam, all the times I've been on here and I've called you Bean and Rumpel Stiltskin, all the times I've called you that, I just want to say that uh, I'm not sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully he'll change his commentary tonight and he won't be as biased, but he might keep reminding us that they're not being biased. So I don't know, but... I just think Adam Smith makes everything about him. He's in every interview on YouTube. He makes everything about him. He's controlling the fight, spinning the narrative. He actually wants to be a star. Adam Smith, you are not a boxer. You are not a star. You are a commentator. So commentate, but zip your mouth. Open it when somebody throws a punch. Or go and watch Ali versus Foreman and look at the commentary on that. They don't speak unless they throw a punch. They don't start telling us what they have for breakfast and how many kids they've got and who they've been sparring. You're there to commentate. No, it's not a reality TV programme, Beanie. <laughs> oh. Is that it? Have you, always, have you always disliked Adam Smith this much? Listen, mate, first time i ever seen him, I thought he would have wronged him. So, he just looks... Look, he's a family man and all that. And I was speaking to him last night. Maybe I shouldn't be harsh on him. He said, don't be harsh on him. He's a family and that. Fair enough. But I look at him and I see Dennis Nielsen. <laughs> when I look at him, I see Dennis Nielsen. He's got the Dennis Nielsen look about him that I don't like. And if it all comes out about him, people are going to be kissing my feet. I'm going to say, Neil, Neil before me. I told you all. I shook up the world. Neil before me. Never, ever, ever again say I can't spot a Dennis Nielsen lookalike at 200 yards. <laughs> so. What do you, hey, what do you reckon of the Selby fight tonight? Do you reckon he wins that? I'm not interested in it. Who cares? Who cares about Lee Selby? I don't. He's got an horrible style, mate. Stinks ring out. He's like Galahad. You want paint, you want open curtains to watch him, would you? I thought Galahad beat Warrington, mate. I didn't. Stunk I didn't out, mate. There was something smelly that night after he left Leeds, and it was it, 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 it was Galahad. You could smell him. So <laughs> no, not my cup of tea. You won't pay to watch Kid Galahad, would you? Jesus. Who put Adam Smith on commentary? How did he get on it? <laughs> I don't know. He was walking around school playground age ten with his dictaphone. Probably oh, while somebody oh. like me would be behind him like that, bending his ear all. It was Nick Holden, weren't it? When I was growing up, it was Nick Holden and Jim Watt. Nick, Jim Watt, Nick Holden, he don't know a fucking thing. <laughs> uh, listen, mate, bring back Jim Watt, Glenn McCrory, and Nicky Piper, bring them back. So, oh, did Adam Smith bought himself on? Hey. 
Did Adam Smith put himself on commentary? Did he decide he's going to be Sky's yeah, commentary? Yeah, he wanted money. He makes it about him, doesn't he? Adam Smith's worse than Bellio. He's never going to disappear. He's never going to disappear. So... Bellio's been loving it this week, hasn't he, IFL? Bellio, I know, the interview. Yeah. The Bellio show. You see him in the press conference when Usyk said, that's Tony Bellio. About his poet. <laughs> that's Tony Bellio. Yeah, listen, mate. Tony Bell, you and I, is never going to disappear, so get used to it. Wait, listen, mate. I've got to get off because I've got another one on coming on here. Like, you've no had your hour. Or hour and ten minutes. But listen, it's been a pleasure having you on. Uh, you, you obviously know what you're on with. Thanks for yeah. coming on. It was like pulling fucking teeth. I'm <laughs> only yeah. joking. Thanks for coming on. And uh, well, yeah, I'll have to have you on again. Uh, but let, let's change subject next time. Let's talk about something a bit different and mix it up a bit because we're getting a bit repetitive, aren't we? But we will do because it's been what's going on over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. But next, so next time you come on, let's try a different angle, yeah, because we want to, like, hold the crowd, don't we? We don't want people sending me emails going, OK, he's talking about the same things again. I can only answer the questions, though, can't I? So let's try and mix it up a bit. But was it all right, though? Oh, you did all right, Tom. I'm going to give you a seven for that and a porky badge. Do you know what I'm on about? Do you know what you're on about? Yeah, you know, you're observing. Look, you're a hardcore boxing fan, aren't you? We're all learning all the time, aren't we? So, yeah. all right then, mate. Thank you very much, anyway, for having me. See Take care, Tom. See you, See mate. You. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. Well, that was Tom Tom the Piper's song, Stole a Pig in a Way He Ran. I enjoyed it. A little hardcore from Warrington. Uh, right then, let's get our next guest on. <laughs> 